Let's take a giant ape on top of a really tall building. In pre-production, a writer creates the story that leads the ape there. Then, studios turn to pre-visualization companies to create mock-ups for every cut shot in the film. With those guidelines in hand, filmmakers can shoot the plate, as it's known, putting an actor or another real-life element in front of a green screen. The plate then goes through keying and rotoscoping, where technicians edit out the content to be removed from the scene down to individual strands of hair. Meanwhile, the computer-generated ape is being created by models. They're the sculptors, only sitting at a computer. Then the model goes to look development artists, who add texture and coloring to make the sculpture look real. That realistic model then gets sent to rigging, where software engineers build the skeleton and write the scripts that allow the character to start moving. From there, the character goes to animators, who actually move the character and create the shots the director wants. They are the puppeteers. With those shots done, character effects artists layer on the clothing or the hair that rides along with the animation. Then it all goes to lighting, where artists generate shadows and reflections to match the lighting of the initial shot footage. Rendering applies all those natural effects to the scene, making it look photorealistic, which leads to compositing, the blending of all the layers onto the initial keyed and rotoscoped plate, creating one unified shot. From there, it's off to color grading, where artists match the colors, tones, and contrast of the visual effect to the other live-action shots in the movie. And lastly, there's the final output of the shot, completing a winding process that can produce virtually anything we can imagine. And then things we can't. 